Thank you for joining us for today's video presentation. After this video teaching, Brenda and I invite you to visit our website, where you will find many free resources and our video archives of previous teachings. Our bookstore has all of our current books and many of our teachings available on DVD. Also, right on the home page is the sign-up form for our email list where you will receive our exclusive monthly newsletter. With the newsletter, you will get access to exclusive teachings, Bible research tools and resources, a monthly biblical calendar and Bible reading schedule following the traditional Torah portions, and other exclusive materials and access to future special events. We know that you will enjoy the teaching today. Thank you for joining us. Shalom and be blessed. The Apostle Peter wrote a letter to the sojourners of the Diaspora who were among the elect who have received sanctification through the blood of Yeshua. Peter addresses many issues in this letter, including the suffering of the believers for the sake of Yeshua. In spite of the suffering and the persecution they were facing, Peter exhorts the believers to live holy and righteous lives. He reminds them of their identity and their purpose before God. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. The garments of the high priest reveal just how we are to accomplish this. I'm Dan Cathcart and this is Shadows of the Messiah. When God gave Moses instructions for setting up his priesthood, he included detailed instructions for the garments the priests were to wear, beginning with the statement that the garments were holy. Exodus 28, verse 2. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. What are the details of these garments? What does each article of clothing represent? Now, we as believers are not priests like Aaron and his sons, so how do we wear the priestly garments of holiness? The first word to describe the garments of the priesthood is that they are holy. And the word is uh, holy is, tr is number 6942, Kadash. According to the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, Kadash means apartness, holiness, or sacredness. These garments are to be set apart from ordinary garments and to be used by the priesthood for ministering before God in the tabernacle. The garments were to be for glory. The Hebrew word translated as glory is kavod, number 3519, literally meaning weight. It comes from the word kaved, number 3513, to be heavy or weighty, referring to the weight as an idiom for giving something its proper worth. Anything that is light has less worth or importance, and anything that is heavy has more worth or importance. And to say that the garments are for glory is to say that they demonstrate the worth and importance of the priesthood and God who is represented by the priesthood. The garments were also for beauty. The Hebrew word translated as beauty is tifara. Number 8597 meaning ornament, beauty, or majesty. The garments of the priesthood, particularly those of the high priest, were to be a visual reminder of the glory and majesty of God. The priests were to wear them so that they could minister before God. Exodus 28 verse 4. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother and his sons, that they may minister to me as priests." Let's examine these garments in more detail to learn how they displayed the glory and splendor of God. Altogether, there are eight elements included in the garments of the high priest. 
Six of them are mentioned up front, and two additional items are mentioned in the explanation that follows. They are the breastplate and the ephod, the robe, the skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and the sash. Now the two additional items are the golden plate attached to the turban and the linen trousers worn underneath the tunic. The first item the Bible describes is the ephod. An ephod is like an apron. It is worn over the tunic. It's made of linen and embroidered with gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread. A stone in a setting of gold was attached to each shoulder strap. Each stone had the names of six of the tribes of Israel engraved on it. They were to be worn as a memorial or remembrance before the Lord. Exodus 28 verse 12. You shall put the two stones on the shoulders of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel. So Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders as a memorial. The word translated as bear is the Hebrew word nasa, number 5375, meaning to lift. The word translated as memorial is the Hebrew word zikron, number 2146, meaning a memento. The Brown Driver Briggs lexicon defines it as a memorial reminder or remembrance. The connotation of the word memorial is to remember something that has happened in the past or something that, it, it, that used to be. For example, we erect a memorial stone at a grave of a person who is deceased. But the tribes of Israel are not deceased in this context. Aaron is not remembering tribes who are no longer there. In this context, the words reminder or remembrance are a better translation. Aaron is to lift the names of the tribes of Israel before the Lord, to remind the Lord that they are his people. The stones also serve to remind Aaron of his purpose as a priest. Finally, those who look at the high priest will see the stones engraved with the names of their own tribe and know that they are remembered before the Lord. We move on now to the breastplate of judgment. The breastplate is to match the decorative style of the ephod using the same materials. It was to be double forming a pocket, so to speak, opening at the top to insert the urim and thummim. Twelve stones, each engraved with one of the tribes of Israel, were to be attached to the breastplate in four rows of three stones. It was to be attached to the ephod by a gold chain fastened to the shoulder straps of the ephod. Now once again, the engraved stones were to be a remembrance. Let's look at Exodus 28 verse 29. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on the breastplate of judgment over his heart, when he goes into the holy place as a memorial before the Lord continually. God is the only true and righteous judge. He says that the iniquity of those who hate him will rebound on, the, on their children. But for those who love him and keep his commandments, he will show mercy. Let's look at Exodus 20, verses 5 through 6. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. This breastplate represents the judgment of God. Having the names of the tribes of Israel engraved on the breastplate is a reminder to God to temper his justice with mercy for his people. Aaron wore the breastplate on his chest, keeping the names of the tribes of Israel next to his heart. The welfare of the children of Israel was to always be his desire. The Urim and Thummim were to be kept in the pouch formed by the doubling of the breastplate. The word Urim is number 224, meaning lights, and the word Thummim is number 8550, meaning perfections. It comes from a root word, tomb, number 8537, meaning completeness, integrity, or perfection. 
This is the same root word from which we get the word to describe the Passover lamb as being without blemish. No one really knows exactly what the Thuman and the Urim really were. Some traditions say that it was a parchment with the name of the Lord written on it and would cause the individual letters on the stones of the breastplate to light up to reveal answers regarding questions of importance to national Israel. Another is that the 12 stones of the breastplate themselves were the actual Urim and Thummim. By the name Lights and Perfections, we can understand that the Urim and the Thummim revealed the perfect will of the Lord. Like the stones on the breastplate, the Urim and the Thummim were to be kept close to Aaron's heart. The robe was to be made entirely of blue with an opening for the head. The opening was to be woven or to have a woven binding all around it to prevent it from tearing. Now this prevents the high priest from tearing his garment in mourning. Now this is a specific commandment for the high priest. Look at Leviticus 21 verses 10 through 11. He who is the high priest among his brethren, on whose head the anointing oil was poured, and who is consecrated to wear the garments, shall not uncover his head, nor tear his clothes, nor shall he go near any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or his mother. Now in spite of personal suffering and grief, the high priest was to continue his ministry. The hem was to be decorated with pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet. Golden bells were to be placed between each of the pomegranates. The sound of the bells on the robe was to be a protection for the high priest whenever he went into the tabernacle. Look at Exodus 28, verse 35. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sounds will be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. This robe of blue was not the robe that Aaron wore to go into the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Aaron wore this robe whenever he ministered in the tabernacle. How the sounds of the bells protected Aaron is open to interpretation. Now one explanation is that it makes, that makes sense is that this served like the tzitzit or the tassels on the corners of their garments to remind the children of Israel to keep the commandments. The commandment to wear the tzitzit was given to Israel after the children of Israel rebelled against God by refusing to go into the promised land. Look at Numbers 15, 38 and 39. Speak to the children of Israel and tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners. And you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that you may not follow the harlotry to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined. The robe of the high priest did not have tassels on the corners of the garment. The robe didn't actually have corners like a typical robe. Instead, the robe had the pomegranates, which included the blue thread that the tzitzit also had. The pomegranates and the sound of the bells may have been a reminder to Aaron to remember and keep the commandments of God. The sound of the bells then protected Aaron from giving in to the temptations of sin and thus protecting him from the anger of God. More specifically, the pomegranates may have been a reminder of the promises of God to the prosper, the children of Israel, in response to keeping the commandments. Deuteronomy 29, verse 9. Therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. The pomegranate has many seeds, and such was a symbol of fertility and prosperity. By wearing the pomegranates, the priest was reminded not only to keep the commandments, but that keeping the commandments would lead to the prosperity of the entire nation. The tunic and the turban were to be woven linen, while the sash was to be woven. Linen was never dyed, it was always white. Traditionally, the sash was red. Look at Exodus 28, verse 39. You shall skillfully weave the tunic of fine linen thread, 
You shall make the turban of fine linen. You shall make the sash of woven work. A plate of pure gold with holy to the Lord engraved on it was to be attached to the front of the turban. Exodus 28 verse 37. Make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it as on a seal, holy to the Lord. Fasten a blue cord to it to attach it to the turban. It is to be on the front of the turban. The purpose of the plate was so that Aaron could bear the iniquity of the offerings of Israel so that they would be accepted by God. Exodus 28 verse 38. So it shall be on Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow in all their holy gifts. And it shall always be on his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord. What does it mean that Aaron would bear the or lift the iniquity of the holy things? The tabernacle and all the furnishings take on the contamination of the world. Each year at Yom Kippur, the high priest needed to make atonement for them. Similarly, the offerings that the children of Israel bring to the Lord carry the iniquity of the world. In that sense, they are less than perfect. Now, by the authority of the name of God written on his forehead, Aaron makes them acceptable. The last item of clothing for the priest is the linen trousers or undergarments. Exodus 28, 42 through 43. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. They shall be on Aaron and his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, that they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever to him and his descendants after him. They wore the trousers so they wouldn't die when they came near the altar. It served to cover their nakedness. The phrase uncovering the nakedness is frequently used as an idiom for sexual intercourse. The linen trousers served to literally cover the genitals, closing off sexual activity. Sexual acts were never to be a part of the worship of God. We have examined what each of these garments uh, signified in relation to Aaron and the high priest. And we know that Yeshua is the true high priest in the heavenly temple before God. We are to be imitators of Christ in, that we, in, in all that we do. With that in mind, what do the garments of the high priest mean for believers as a royal priesthood? The high priest had eight specific garments that he wore. Now, eight is the number of new beginnings. It's associated with the resurrection and regeneration, the beginning of a new era or a new order. By putting on the garments of the priesthood, we are putting on our new selves. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The colors of the garments include gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and white. Now, gold is valued for its purity. Both it and purple are the colors of kings and royalty. Blue is the color of the heavens. The blue represents the connection to the heavens and the dwelling place of God. Scarlet represents the process of purification. It takes the blood of Yeshua to atone for our sins and white represents righteousness and purity. When we put on the garments of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and white, we acknowledge that we are a royal priesthood serving the King of Kings who died to purify us from our sins and pass through the heavenly realms. We also have an inheritance in heaven. Look at 1 Peter 1, 3-4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. 
Our sins have been purified and we wear the white linen tunic, turban, and trousers of the saints. The linen trousers emphasize the need for sexual purity. The white linen also reminds us of the lives that we are to live. 1 Peter 1 verse 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Over the white linen, we wear the ephod of our office as priests. The beauty of the decorative ephod should reflect the beauty of our lives as we live them before God. Part of our duties is to lift up the names of our fellow believers, our spiritual family before God. When we come before God, we are to remember them and lift their names to God. The breastplate with the names of the tribes of Israel on the jewels is a double remembrance of our spiritual family. Their names are engraved on the jewels symbolizing their importance to us and to God. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 5. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The sound of the bells and the sight of the pomegranates on the hem of the robe remind us that we are to keep God's commandments so that our sacrifices are acceptable before God. The Urim and the Thummim remind us that we are to seek God's perfect will for both our lives and those of our spiritual family. We are His servants to command. 1 Peter 2, 15-16 For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. The robe with the woven opening in the garment reminds us that even though we endure suffering and grief, we are still to continue our ministry as a royal priesthood. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We follow the example of our Messiah Yeshua. We also put on the garments of the priesthood knowing that they are for the glory and beauty of God the Father. We remember that as we lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer before God, that Yeshua also intercedes for us as we acknowledge that our sins that were once scarlet have been forgiven as we rightfully wear the white linen of purity. We hear the bells and we see the pomegranates reminding us of the lives we are to live through Yeshua. Now won't you put on the garments of that royal priesthood? Thanks for watching today. I'm Dan Cathcart and this has been Shadows of the Messiah. Shalom and be blessed.